peekaboo! We're eating two kinds of egg waffles and exploring Kowloon Park. As expected, there is a line at this egg waffle place. I'm like the six person in line. Looks like the cost is 17 HKD. Oh, look at that goodness trip down. Thank you. Look at how perfect it is. It is not greasy, oily, not at all. Oh, if you touch it, it's smooth. Wow. Did you know that egg waffle and bubble wrap are long distant cousins? Before my battery dies out, let's have a bite. I thought the inside would contain some sort of like custard, but no, it is plain. I would say the texture is louder than the flavor. Still enjoyable. Have you been big on sweets? Then this might be boring for you. But if you love crispy things, this is a fun party in the mouth. FYI, it gets really flaky when you eat this. I'm saving these little snacks for dinner. What happens if we open this up? Actually, it doesn't even open up. It's glued shut very well. Oops. Oh, oh no. One of the babies fell down. The bottom half is concentrated with the carbs, and the upper half is very airy, hollow. Then my battery died. A few days later, I ate another egg waffle, this time with more flavor. I was walking on Dundas Street, and here they have an egg waffle shop that has fillings inside. This one is taro paste. Assorted nuts and chocolate, a red bean paste and ginger am, yam, and coconut and chocolate and cheese. Can you pronounce this in Chinese? <laughs> the one I got was uh, 25 Hong Kong dollars, and the original I get is 18. Like a baby in the room. Those egg waffles are getting ready to be born. Now here's the name of the shop in Chinese. I'm trying to figure out the address of this egg waffle shop. Um, it's between Nathan Road and uh, Shanghai Street. Thank you! Oh, this baby! Oh, so crunchy. I didn't even get to the main part. Oh, it's so tasty already. The seaweed flavor tastes stronger than the pork. Let's have a half bite. Take a look at the inside. So we have little, little thin shreds of cute dried seaweed. But maybe each little component has a different amount of filling. Let's bite into another bubble to find out. Actually, that one has even less filling. Mmm, that was powerful. And I see some white sesame seeds in that. As a bonus, the crumbs we save for later. And they make a tasty decoration. The pieces of seaweed inside, it makes it slightly salty. But only for like a nanosecond. Wherever you go around the world, you can't avoid McDonald's. AKA, the sagging boobs. We're going to be walking through Kowloon Park. Kindly, we have a map of the park. You see there's a lot of paths. Let's have a um, goal here. Something to work towards. The birds. To go to the Avery, we turn right. We have senior citizens playing some games in the corner. Red-tailed cockatoo. Take a look at his beak. Wow, oh, it looks like he has two beaks. The male has um, the top beak going upwards and the female is straight. So the bird here, let's look closely, upper beak is straight, so it's a female. Meow, meow. In one aspect, I'm not a huge fan of you know, putting birds into cages because they want to fly, they want to be free. However, at the same time, you know, it is a city and it's nice to bring nature here for people to enjoy and people to be reminded 
of living things other than human beings. And especially children who grow up in the city, they're exposed to different kinds of creatures. So it sparks curiosity for them to explore more and to learn more about the world. Pros and cons to every situation. Seeing animals in pictures versus seeing them in real life is a different experience. Just like seeing photos of Bali and actually going there, you normally don't look up pictures of bugs in Bali, but when you go to Bali, well, you might experience geckos pooping at a restaurant. I have experienced that twice. It's nice to just walk around through the meandering paths uh, without much thought, just letting your subconscious lead your legs. The trees are quite tall, maybe like 50 feet, so they cover most views of the buildings. You still get to see the hats of the buildings, but eye level is just greenery. Selfie zone! Right when you take one of the exits out of this park, back to the city life. That pharmacy signage looks more like a karaoke bar. Alright, okay, let's do a little workout for the thighs. We're gonna enter the park again from another entrance. This area is called the Color Garden. The fencing here reminds me of some coconuts I encountered in Vietnam. One of my hobbies is looking closely at tree trunks and just admiring the texture. If we deep fry it, it'll be crispy. Aha, a maze garden. The shorter you are, it'll be more fun to go through this maze. I mean, if you're short, you can't see over the bushes, so it'll be more challenging. But the taller you are, you could, you know, predict ahead where is the dead end. It's probably a lot of fun for her. There's no dead end in this maze garden. You just keep walking and walking. Not much thinking involved. Just a very chill stroll. Is this an exit? It looks to be some sort of pigeon garden. Dead grass and pigeons, but there's something charming about this dead grass. It almost looks like leaves. Actually, it is leaves. We got dozens of pigeons in this tree. I gotta walk over this way, so if any of them happen to poop, it won't land on my head. Being around all those pigeons reminded me of my college friend who was from Angola. He's a rapper, but he's studying architecture with me. And he was saying in his country that they love pigeons and they keep them as pets, but they don't like cats. They think cats are evil because when they cry at night, it might sound like a baby. Little cultural tidbit that I picked up from college. Hope you enjoyed this Hong Kong travel vlog. What's next? Tune in next week to find out. Bye-bye!